For an arthritic shoulder that does not have an intact rotator cuff, or in some cases severe fractures of the shoulder, um, or finally in rotator cuff tears that have had efforts at repair that haven't healed or, um, or tendons that aren't repairable, there's another option called a reverse shoulder replacement, which is designed to basically recruit a muscle, the deltoid, to do something that it's capable of um, but never really had to do before. It's, it's a trick, basically. It's a, it's a physics equation that um, we use to our advantage. And so when I'm talking to patients in the office, I, 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 I'm a, I use a lot of analogies. And so the rotator cuff, if, if this is the ball and this is the socket, the rotator cuff's job with the ball and the socket is to keep the head centered. And so if you think about it, if, the, if these muscles come over and attach to the ball, when you try to raise your arm, if nothing holds that head centered in the socket, then it will rise up. So when those muscles try to pull the arm up, it will just slide across the socket unless something pushes down on it, and that's the rotator cuff's job. So when the rotator cuff tears, whether you have arthritis or not, if it tears significantly enough, when you try to raise your arm, the head just drifts north. What I tell patients is it's exactly like trying to lean a dolly back that has a lot of weight on it without putting your foot on the crossbar at the bottom. If, if you're trying to pivot around a wheel that's going to move, you have to have something that stabilizes it. In the shoulder, that's the rotator cuff. So when you go to raise your arm, the rotator cuff pushes it down, depresses the head so that it can, so you can raise it up. When you don't have that, you can't do a regular shoulder replacement. Because if you do, you put a new ball and a new socket, but when you try to raise your arm, it's still going to slide up. And so the reverse shoulder is truly that. It's a, it's, we reverse the ball and the socket. So in a normal shoulder, if this is the socket and this is the ball, the forces want to push the head north when, when the tendons pull. So we put a, so a ball where the socket was and a socket where the ball was. And now when those same forces try to drive the ball up, which is now the socket, it will just pivot around it. And so the deltoid muscle, which attaches right out here, can raise the arm by pivoting this socket around the ball. And so we take this force, which is sort of a shear force, and turn it into a compressive force, and it just spins around the ball. This is your foot behind the dolly, and the wheel can just pivot around it. The reverse shoulder, when used for the right conditions is, is, is a game changer because it's an answer that we didn't have previously. It's especially important in fractures. So where we used to try to piece together three, four, five, six different pieces of bone in a 75, 80, 85 year old person, it can be very difficult to predictably get that to heal. Not only that, but it's a slow, painful process. Using the reverse shoulder in conjunction with getting those pieces of bone back where they belong has now allows us to answer that for patients and, and have a much better chance than we ever had at getting their motion as normal as possible. And so patients will, will, will say, you know, well, I have a normal shoulder. And I say, I don't, I don't know. This is your best chance at a normal shoulder. And for a lot of our patients, they'll say just that, my shoulder feels like a normal shoulder. What I tell patients though, especially in, with fractures, is that what you can expect is to have your best opportunity for function with a reverse shoulder in certain fracture patterns. So figuring out which, um, whether it's fixing the fracture or doing a reverse shoulder replacement, whether it's repairing your rotator cuff or doing a shul reverse shoulder replacement, or whether it's having a regular shoulder replacement, or having a reverse shoulder replacement has a lot of criteria that go into that decision making. The key, if I could emphasize anything, would be to make sure that you seek treatment with someone who does a lot of shoulder replacements. And the data is surprising to most patients, but upwards of 90% of the shoulder replacements that are done in the United States every year are done by a surgeon who does one or fewer that year. And my, what I tell patients is, look, I don't have to be the one that does your surgery, but if you're in my family, 
seek someone out who does a lot of shoulder replacements um, if you're contemplating having that done. And I think when you do that, you'll be more successful at non-operative treatment options, first of all. But if you do have a surgery, um, we'll make sure that this, the right surgery is chosen for you um, so that you give yourself the best chance at the shoulder you're, you're having the surgery for in the first place.